Try the wilds. Held no grudge. But if you want to make a fight, I'll make a fight with you anywhere. All right, make a fight, was Wyatt's answer as he crashed his pistol into Tom McClowry's skull. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the ERP jury, after these <laughs> events, can any reasonable person defend the ERP's decision to confront the Clantons and McClowry's on the street? Can any of, you, any of you pretend that they went into the street simply to enforce the law? It is clear that the usually clear-headed and cool-tempered Wyatt, who probably never killed a man before and preferred to get the drop of it on a troublemaker by coming up behind him in an alley with a shotgun <laughs> or crashing his, uh, buffaloing him as hitting him over the head, Wyatt Earp had made up his mind what he was going to do. Ike Clanton had shot off his mouth once too often about killing the Earps, and it was time to kill the Clantons and any friends of theirs who stood by them before they had the chance to carry out the threat. <clears throat> Even after the hearings in Tombstone, the fight was not over. In late December, Virgil was shotgun shotgunned by three men in the street. Ike Clanton's hat was found nearby, so it was said, and his friend Frank Stilwell was spotted near the scene. Wyatt drew the obvious conclusions, though they would not have amounted to much in a court of law, purely circumstantial evidence. By the end of January, though Virgil was still in serious condition, Morgan Earp was pretty well recovered. Though warned of trouble, he insisted, because he was a hothead, he insisted on having a night on the town, going out to the theater, and then to the pool hall, where he was shot through the window as he bent over to make a shot. <coughs> People said that the shooter was Frank Stilwell, and when Wyatt caught up with Stilwell, he and Ike Clanton appeared to be lying in wait for Virgil Earp, who was being sent home to California for his health. When Wyatt came upon Stilwell, he killed him in cold blood. This is Wyatt's own words. I ran straight for Stilwell. It was he who killed my brother. What a coward he was. He couldn't shoot when I came near him. He stood there helpless and trembling for his life. As I rushed upon him, he put out his hands and clutched at my shotgun. I let go both barrels, and he tumbled down dead and mangled at my feet. Wyatt went after Ike, but the cowardly Clanton once again made his escape. <clears throat> By the standards of civilized life, both parties were guilty of cold-blooded, premeditated murder in the first degree. That is the killing of the or shooting an herb through the window or the killing of Frank Stilwell. But let's look at it from each of their perspectives. The Clantons would say with some justice that the herbs had provoked a quarrel with the Clantons and McClowrys, and then with their homicidal dentist friend, <laughs> gunned them down in the street. By the laws of vendetta, <coughs> universal in European man, they deserve to die. Not in a fair fight, not in an affair of honor, but executed without mercy or a chance to resist. The herbs, on the other hand, though they would not have accepted the cowboy's right to blood, applied exactly the same logic and argument to the men who had assassinated Morgan and tried to do the same to Virgil. By the end of the story, the Earps will have killed two McLowrys, Billy Clanton, Frank Stilwell, Curly Bill Brocious, and who knows whom else. And yet for all their toughness and homicidal violence, neither the Earps nor the McLowrys could be really described as gunmen, much less as outlaws. They lived according to an ancient code that may have withered in London and Boston, but had sprung back to life on the, on the frontier. 